Welcome to the video. I'm very excited for this one because today we are interviewing David Rowley, a professional footballer in Malaysia currently with Penang FC. He has had a long professional career in football, playing in many different countries, which we'll get into in this video. And this is going to be a great resource for all of you listening to get some more insight into the professional game into uh, the professional game in different countries as well. And David has an incredible array of experience and wisdom um, and just information to give you. So please pay attention. Please heed the advice he gives you. So without further ado, let's get into the interview with David Rowley. All right, guys, welcome to the video today. I have my friend David Rowley. Uh, with me, a uh, professional player in Malaysia for Penang FC. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Correct, Penang. And we're going to uh, ask him a few questions about his career, some of his, uh, uh, get some of his insight in the professional game over in the countries he's played in, uh, current, uh, currently playing in Malaysia, like I said. And we'll just uh, kick it off right away, David, with the first question. And I wanted to get it a question that's more rel uh, more personal to you. And it's, uh, at what point did you realize you wanted to be a professional footballer? And then at what point did you really start going for it, really start putting in the work? Um, and that was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah, uh, good question, Dave. Uh, <laughs> so when I, grow up, when I grew up in Australia, soccer or football yeah. uh, is not so, it's not such a big sport. So I didn't really have, a dream to play professionally, but I was playing club football, I was playing school football, and then I was doing really well. And around 16 and 17, uh, people started talking to me, maybe you should go overseas. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about, yeah, professional uh, football might be an option. So it was actually quite late. It wasn't mm -hmm. really a dream from a very young age. So it was like 17, 18 around that age is when 16, you 16 to 16. 18 exactly okay so that's yeah. interesting so it, you weren't like a kid like five six years old dreaming of uh playing under the lights or anything like that no it i think yeah the the sport was not so big in australia at the time mm -hmm. like the a league the first the first division which is professional that that wasn't created until i was like 13 years old and before mm -hmm. it was just like a semi-professional competition. So it wasn't like in Germany or England where the football's crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So, and then, um, and so at 16, that's when you really started training, really started going, I'm going to do this or I'm going to go, or at least I'm going to try, I'm going to go for it. I was still like, when I was playing club football, we were still training like three or four times a week. And then I had school football as well, which was, quite serious we're training four or five times a week so that's why I guess I was a, a good player because I was playing football all the time you've played in um I think four different countries three different continents or uh in Europe in Asia and Australia so I know you played in Germany uh you played here in Thailand and obviously now in Malaysia and Australia um so what would you say are some of the biggest differences between all of them um different styles and density or just different ways of, of playing between all of those yeah so when I came from Australia I was playing in the second division and the football in Australia uh, it's not so technical so mm -hmm. when I went to Asia I first I first went to Thailand the players are technically much better than Australians in oh. general okay. um, and also when I was playing in Thailand it was full-time football second division is semi-professional in Australia and then when I went to Germany and I was playing in Luxembourg, uh, the knowledge of footballers is, is, is much greater. They have a better understanding of tactics. And also a lot of players, they've gone through academies, especially in Germany. So I was playing in the fifth division in Germany. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my teammates had been in Bundesliga academies or played ex-professionally. So, yeah, the standard is much higher in Europe. Mm -hmm. um yeah, so actually, uh, so those players coming from the Bundesliga and maybe second division in Germany, uh, would you say, what would you say is the difference between maybe them and some, some of the players you played with in, in Asia or um, at other levels? Like, what was it that allowed them to play at those levels at one point in time? 
Yeah, I think in Germany, the training, the intensity is so much higher than you get in Asia. Mm -hmm. Asia, Well, especially in Southeast Asia, training is more, I would say, less professional. And the attitude of German players is just football, football, football. They're so focused. They know everything, diet, fitness, everything. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you still get good players in, in Asia. But yeah, Germany, it's another level. And when, you, when you're constantly surrounded by football and uh, good academies, good players, good competitions, of course, the level is going to be much higher. Mm-hmm. So uh, going back to uh, playing in Asia then, uh, what advice would you give for players who do want to play in Asia, outside of Asia? Because I don't think too many players outside of Asia know much about the game in Asia. Um, and so what would you say for those who are interested or there might be opportunities for players outside of Asia, maybe players from the West, from Europe um, and other countries. um, What would you say is some good advice if they want to come over somewhere, Thailand, Malaysia, something like that and play professionally? Yeah, for sure. So with Southeast Asia, it's important that you get some contacts before you come over. Mm -hmm. So you just don't rock up with, um, any knowledge of the place because it's totally different from like, for example, America, where you're coming from, Thailand's totally different. Um, When I first came to Thailand, I didn't know about the leagues. Um, I only had a couple contacts and it made it a lot, lot easier by having them contacts instead of just going there and trying to find a team. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing. You need to have contacts before you go, try and, like I say on um, to many, many players that want to come to Asia, it's important that you uh, talk to players that are already there, try and get agents through that way and see if you can get something like this. So that's the most important uh, contacts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just the connections, doing the research, making exactly. sure you're not going in blind, like you said. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just on that, Dave, that's with contact, but about playing, you need to be really fit because as you know, in Thailand, it's very hot. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it's totally different coming from Germany where the weather's cooler. Um, you're going to definitely lose a lot of kilograms when you're, when you're playing in, in Thailand, training in the hot sun for a couple hours each day. So mm-hmm. it's important that you come fit. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And whenever I go out and train here, it's crazy how much it'll zap your energy. Um, and it's hot all the time. Even it just it doesn't matter. It's just always hot. So exactly. yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so what? Um, I'm assuming throughout your career, you've had a lot of players um, that you've trained with or played with that have played at all levels, semi-pro, amateur, and professional. Uh, so I'd love to hear your take on what is the difference between those players, like some of the main differences between maybe a pro player and maybe the semi-pros who you played with in Australia, or even just um, a good amateur player, what is it that's needed really to make that step up to the professional game? Yeah, I think it, it comes a lot down to experience. So the best players that I've played with, they played hundreds of games and they know where to position themselves better. Um, their touch is better. Under pressure, they're able to do things which maybe other players can't. So I think that's the, the main thing. They can handle pressure better and they position themselves better. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they make less mistakes. Yeah, less mistakes. So like more like the intelligence of like the football IQ is just higher than the average player. Yeah. yeah. And then also fitness levels, obviously are gonna be better. They're gonna be stronger, better athletes. The higher you go up, gonna be faster, mm-hmm. more explosive, et cetera. Okay, yeah. Um, and then bringing it back to you, um, I think I was there for what may have been the best moment in your career so far. I might be wrong, um, but I would love to hear about like, what was the most difficult time of your professional career so far? And maybe how did you overcome that, uh, versus what was maybe the best moment of your career for, uh, so far? Okay. Yeah. So the difficult, most difficult situation. So it would probably be like injuries. Mm -hmm. and then of course because that puts you out and you want to achieve stuff but then you can't play you can't show yourself so 
especially I've had a knee injury before. So I was out for a few months and that totally changes the way you play. Mm -hmm. And then also I think one of the low or one of the more the difficult parts about football is when you finish a contract and then you need to find a new team and it's not easy to find a new team, mm -hmm. um, especially at a professional level. It's difficult. And sometimes you have to go for trials. Yeah. And then you're left in the dark until, you know, it's getting close to the next season and you don't have a team. So that's a difficult, a difficult thing that you got to deal with. And then you're always moving as well. So yeah, I would say they're the two most uh, difficult things. Mm -hmm. And then um, what would you say so far um, has been the, the highlight of your career, the biggest moment? Yeah, I guess you were there as well, Dave. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, playing in front of 80,000 and, and winning oh, yeah. the, uh, the FA Cup for Keta mm -hmm. um, in Kuala Lumpur. I think that was yeah, the greatest, greatest achievement of my career. Yeah, we'll put some footage in for that. Uh, when I'm editing, yeah, that was a... Uh, yeah, I was so made up for you once uh, when that happened. It was such a crazy moment. When I stepped into that, I remember stepping into that stadium and hearing the noise. I'm like, I wonder what it's like for David on the pitch right now. Because uh, I'm assuming yeah. that's the biggest, like that's got to be one of the the biggest um, just uh, audiences or just fan number you've uh, played under. Yeah, I think for that year, I think it was like maybe in the top 20 in the whole world. Mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a massive stadium and because everyone wants to go to the final it's full um yeah with playing playing on the field it's funny actually you don't really hear the crowd that much only sometimes mm -hmm. but yeah it, it, it's mental to think that so many people can fit into into a stadium yeah yeah it was uh, i'll put some stuff across like i said it was it was mental it was a uh... That was a phenomenal realization. What is some uh, something that players who are pursuing a pro contract, so players who are who are right now, they believe they're good enough, they're going for it, they're creating connections or, or whatever else they're doing. Um, what do you think a lot of players who are doing this are not being proactive with enough um, that they should be more proactive with? Maybe you've seen it with people you know, or even like people who come on trial to clubs you've been at. What would you say they should be focusing on more? Yeah. Uh, I would say that the majority of players, they're not training enough. They're not doing enough. I, I'm guilty of it as well. I can always do more. Mm -hmm. um, to be a better player, you've got to be doing extra. You've got to work on uh, things that are going to affect your game the most. And, I mean, if you're a striker, then you want to be really good at both feet, shooting, finishing. So if you go to a trial, you're going to impress and a lot of players, let's be honest, uh, don't impress. So, yeah, that's the reason why a lot of players will not get signed. Mm -hmm. And there's, yeah, it's not that, it is difficult to do, but I guess if you're putting in work every day, if you're doing a lot more than others, you're going to be, you're going to eventually be better than others. Yeah. Just that consistency over time. Yeah. And a lot of people need to be training the right way. You've always got to think, uh, what are the best exercises to help me in the game? Mm -hmm. So if you're a midfielder, then you focus on moving into the right positions to receive the ball and you're turning, you're passing. Yeah. yeah. It's actually pretty simple, but a lot of people don't do it. And then just to finish it off, um, any other advice you want to give players who are watching? Um, you know, we'll probably have a mix of younger players, maybe players who are doing that, pursuing a pro contract, maybe collegiate players too. So uh, any advice you want to leave them with? Yeah, guys, just always learn from the best. Look at the what the best players are doing, Ronaldo, how they're training, what exercises they're doing and implement it into your game. Also, Dave, he's got a lot of good, good information. <laughs> no, you seriously do. Uh, and thanks, um, yeah, listen to it, take on board, um, take on board the information and apply it to your game and, and always look to improve. Everyone can improve. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, so I want to thank David for being here. Check out his stuff down below. I'll put down his YouTube channel. He's got some great stuff on there. 
uh, some highlights from some of his professional games, some analysis videos, some stuff about playing in Asia, uh, some really great stuff on there. So go check him out. I'll put all his social links down below. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. I know we did this pretty short yeah, notice, I, and I'm, I love that. We're also in the same time zone, so it made it very easy. Uh, but thank oh, you so man, much I wanna, for I want to come visit you again in, in Chumpon. Oh, please do, man. Yeah, please, yeah, please do, man. Uh, we got to make it happen. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, and again, check out David's stuff down below.